If you can't catch the meaning, catch the drift. Catch it if you can, and catch us too. So say the brew crew. Great catch in Atlanta, but with a catch. Make that no catch. Catch 22. The Giants catch fire, the Dodgers catch the blues, but who'll catch the Braves? Catch got your tongue? The Angels catch the Royals speechless. And catch them in the clinch. The Redbirds embrace at the end of the race. Want a catchphrase to sum up the craze? How about baseball fever? Catch it once and for all on This Week in Baseball. Junior Banana Split. Sonic's got it, others don't. Introducing Sonic's new Junior Banana Split. Half the size, but all the taste for just 99 cents. Drive in tonight and get any of your favorite desserts. We'll be open till at least midnight all summer long. The human machine only performs at its peak when it replaces what it loses. That's why Gatorade puts back the sodium, potassium, and carbs water does not have. These essential elements are the reason Gatorade has been proven to rehydrate, replenish, and refuel athletes better than water. Thank you. That's it. Thank you, everyone. Really great loan offers. Remember, no points. OK. Bye. We'll let you know. I think we got some pretty good mortgage offers there. Yeah. Of course, we still need to pick a real estate agent. Now at LendingTree.com, you can find a mortgage and a real estate agent all in one place. Call now at 1-800-555-TREE. Sorry about that, guys. Hey, no problem. We got a four bed. You can now view detailed listings of homes for sale in your area to meet your specific needs. And for a limited time, you can get up to a $2,000 gift card to the Home Depot when you close with an agent certified by LendingTree. Just fill out one simple form and choose the mortgage and the real estate agent that's right for you. Act now and take advantage of our gift card offer to the Home Depot. Call Lending Tree at 1 800 555 Tree. American League East. Pennant fever of brewing and boiling over in Brewtown. Could Harvey Keene's first place brewers hold a three game lead? Or would Earl Weaver's Orioles whistle them down with 10 days to go? John Lowenstein in the first inning of the first of three games of Milwaukee with two Orioles aboard, Lord or Lowenstein the boom for a four-run lead. But with hitters like Robin Yount on the counterattack, four runs usually aren't enough to beat Milwaukee. Yount countered with home run number 25, and then added number 26 to pump up the score and the Brew Crew's pennant hungry vocalist. Of course, Robin isn't the only Batman in Milwaukee. Paul Molitor went four for five. Molitor, Yount, and Cecil Cooper. One, two, three in the Brewer lineup and one, two, three in the American League in total hits. And in this game, Milwaukee totaled 18 hits for a 15 to 6 Brewer breakaway.
Milwaukee was four games up on the Orioles with a magic number of six. The best collection of talent I've ever played with, said starter Don Sutton, who despite allowing 10 hits and six runs, collected his third American League victory. Jim Palmer held the Brewers to four hits and a 7-2 Oriole laugher. In the final game in the second inning, slugger Gorman Thomas took a long look at home run number 39. Good for a one to nothing Milwaukee lead. Then in the fourth, Red Hot Eddie Murray answered with his 31st homer and second of the series. With a score tied 1-1 in the fifth, rookie Cal Ripken Jr. gave the Birds a 2-1 lead with his 87th RBI. Then trailing 3-2 in the eighth, Milwaukee threatened the tie with a sacrifice fly, but untested rookie John Shelby met the test with this clutch throw. Watch him. Tippy Martinez, relieving Dennis Martinez, saved number 16, and the Birds trailed by only two with four to go against the Brewers in Baltimore. In the West, the California Angels took haste to get hot just when Kansas City was not, as if to say, let's wrap this baby up right now. Juan Beniquez, given a little playing time as Reggie Jackson licked a couple of wounds, got his licks in Reggie style with a three-run homer against the Rangers. The Angels only won two of four in Texas, but that was good enough since the Royals kept on losing. And for those who might have thought that Bruce Keeson had lost his stuff, well, think again. Dipsy Doodle Dandy Keeson won his tent to keep California on the beam. And when you're smiling, there's normally a reason. Home runs could be one reason. Homer number 23 for Don Baylor. Doug DeSensei also went long balling. Home run number 29 and a six to five angel win. But enough of this high five jive. For the true royal bugaboo, turn back the clock to California where Mr. October and sidekicks really put the hurt on Kansas City earlier in the week. Reggie Jackson slid hard. Frank White got hurt. Amos Otis swung hard and Fred Lynn applied the royal hurt. And then Doug three a day to Sensei. Twice this season, he had homered thrice in one game. And against the Royals, he made a bid for a record thrice, thrice. Amos Otis robbed him, but couldn't hold up the Angels from winning thrice. Five days hence, the Royals were home, but on the brink of being extinct should they lose twice more to California. Kansas City took a two to nothing lead, only to throw it away in the fifth. With the score tied in the seventh, Don Baylor batted after Rod Carew sacrificed Brian Downing to second and delivered his 21st game-winning RBI, tops in the major leagues. Louis Sanchez, or Louis Gossage as Gene Mock called him, relieved Tommy John and got a game-saving double play and quick as abracadabra, a magic number of two in the final week of 82. A question of double plays with a questionable anecdote. The Mets were testing rookie Brian Giles to see if he might be involved in next year's double play combination. He'd like to be involved, but wasn't in this case, having forgotten how many outs and thereby failing to complete the double play. Now, can you name the major league fielder who's been involved in the most double plays this year? Stay tuned, will you, kid? to five grand cash back during GM Summer Drive now. Have fun with it. 
Dennis Eckersley. I had a chip on my shoulder. I didn't like who I played against. A Sports Century world premiere, July 19th. Infidelity. My wife, Denise, and I were not getting along. She had fallen in love with Rick Manning. Alcoholism. There were times when he, he couldn't even talk to his daughter, or sometimes he'd be falling down. And comeback. He worried so much about falling back, it drove him to be the best in the game. Sports Century, Dennis Eckersley. Premieres 9 p.m. July 19th, only on ESPN Classic. She has a secret. He has a secret. They all have a secret. Now we're blowing the lid off the best body shaping, calorie burning secret weapon in America with the million selling Gazelle and this once in a lifetime special offer. You can burn total body calories, tone total body muscle with virtually no impact. Last year, Tony Little made TV history by offering the Gazelle's 1495 30 day test drive. Call now and for just $14.95, test drive the Gazelle in your own home, not for 30 days, but for a full 60 days. But wait, this deal just got even better. Take advantage of this TV offer and shipping is free. Save almost $35 and get the Gazelle risk-free in your home for a full 60 days. Call now and your Elite will come with this Power Pistons Resistance Package that adjusts easily for beginners, intermediate, and advanced. Over a million happy customers can't be wrong. Once you try the Gazelle, you'll be just as crazy about it as they are. Don't miss out. Discover the secret to getting in shape with the Gazelle Elite. Call and get yours right now. National League West. Could the San Francisco Giants, winning 15 of 19 to creep four games out, work a small miracle in Los Angeles? Or would the first place Dodgers halt the tide? Three games would decide. Chili Davis, batting in the fifth inning of the first game, put him in stride. Two runs scored, and the game was tied. The score remained 2-2 until the eighth, when red-hot Darrell Evans broke the ice with this run-scoring base hit. Three to two, San Francisco. Time to let the moon shine, as Greg Minton, baseball's hottest reliever over the past month, picked up his 29th save and moved the Giants one step closer to the improbable. Game two. While umbrellas may have protected fans from L.A. sun rays, not even Fernando Valenzuela, looking for his 20th victory, could protect against San Francisco winning ways. Despite their aggressiveness, the Giants trailed 4-3 before an eighth inning rally. Joe Morgan, a 309 hitter with runners in scoring position, got his third hit to put them up 5-4. San Francisco had won more one-run games than any National League team, and relievers like Moon Minton deserve credit. The Moon proved brilliant in daylight, too, for the club record 30th save. Overall, San Francisco's bullpen allowed little more than one run per nine in a month's time. Also, since June 27th, credit the Giants and Frank Robinson with baseball's best record. Now, to complete the coup in game three, Darrell Evans provided the power, a two-run blast for his 16th homer as the Giants scored three in the fifth and held on for their first three-game sweep in L.A. in 15 years. Al Holland raised his streak to 17 and two-thirds hit the innings and then saved the game three to two, putting the Giants one game away with a week to play. And how about those Atlanta Braves who subsequently took over first? What a weird year for them. For a long time, the Braves had a stranglehold on the division, but then after holding a nine-game bulge, were seriously humbled, seemingly without a prayer of recovery. But players like Rafael Ramirez answered some prayers. With the Braves three games behind the Dodgers and only three games left at home, Atlanta's up and down shortstop had his biggest game against the Padres. Three for three with two homers and five RBIs. 
of Sweet Stroking Raphael Masterpiece, and the gallery applauds. Jerry Royster went four for five, and the whole ball club went on a rampage, banging out 16 hits. Atlanta made up a four-run deficit to come from behind for the 44th time, beating the Padres 11 to six. If anyone could figure out how to master this mad division plot, it wasn't the declining Padres who figured in it most of the year. Rookie Steve Bedrosian, who's figured heavily in the Braves' success with a 2.18 ERA, wrapped it up with save number 11, and Atlanta was on the march. The next day, Dale Murphy and company rewarded the home crowd's appreciative spirit again in typical hard-pounding style. There it is, going, going, and long gone. Number 36 for Murph, 24 on the home turf. In case you didn't know, Atlanta's Man of Steel is the only brave to play in every game. Claudel Washington also had a big game with three smash hits and four RBIs. Once more by comeback, the Braves were victors 12 to six and one game out in the wild, wild west. But then what seemed like a bad joke threatened to flip out everyone in Atlanta. It wasn't a joke, but a Harper's Bazaar. Fair or foul, Terry Harper had the ball into the wall, but it was ruled in play and a home run inside the park. That made the difference in a three to two Padre win. Nevertheless, the Braves stayed in the race and took first place two days later. In the East, the Arch of Triumph finally had a place in St. Louis as the suddenly uncontested Cardinals calmly clutched the title for the first time since their 68 pennant celebration. In winning 12 of 15 games, the Redbirds ran away from the fumbling Eastern pack with a surprising ease. The gas house style is the tempting way to put it, but though the running Redbirds were pacing the league with 193 steals, the team record of 204 does not belong to the Cardinals gas house gang of the 30s, but the Cardinals of 1914. Remember them, birds? Well, if not, remember that these Cardinals flew straight despite criticisms of Whitey Herzog's trades and claims that the pitching was too thin. Forget that. Rookie John Stuper came up in late May and was solid enough to win nine, including a three to one victory over the Cubs, which gave him three straight in the stretch drive. And Joaquin Andahar jacked his record to 15 and 10, winning seven straight while allowing only seven runs. Also pitched five shutouts. Hard to believe? Well, if the competition was caught off guard, that's baseball. And Cardinal baseball meant red hot defense. It also meant more than two million fans and a club attendance record, breaking the mark set in 67 when the Cardinals last won a World Series. St. Louis set that new record as the Redbirds finished their home season by winning two of three from the Cubs to reduce their magic number to two. Then they hit the road to Montreal's Big O, Olympic Stadium, where they got a quick taste of that clinching sensation as the Cubs beat Philadelphia and the Expos, last year's division champs, failed to play spoiler. A four to two win for the St. Louis Cardinals, a new champion in the National League East, and the first club to clinch its division in 1982's mad, mad photo finish pennant picture. Two-time gold glove winner Cecil Cooper, Milwaukee's superb all-around first baseman, has been involved in more double plays this year than any other player in the majors. Now this may come as no great surprise to those who know that the bat famous brew crew leads the American League in twin killings or for anyone aware that this Cecil ain't just be milling around. 
Junior Banana Split. Sonic's got it, others don't. Introducing Sonic's new Junior Banana Split. Half the size, but all the taste for just 99 cents. Drive in tonight and get any of your favorite desserts. We'll be open till at least midnight all summer long. Well, it's been a long day for Strahan. What a lovely shot. Yeah! Who's the man? Hey, Strahan, maybe it's your deodorant. Let's start over. No, not that one. This time, start with new Right Guard Gel. It's the strongest gel. Keeps you drier than even the leading stick, so it lasts till the end of the day. Oh, that is brilliant. Yes! Right Guard. Start right, end right. We have reinvented the wheel, reconsidered every part and every system. We have reimagined man's interface with machine by fusing 250 turbocharged horses with a symmetrical all-wheel drive system to create a vehicle that's truly revolutionary. The remarkably powerful, beautifully redesigned Subaru Legacy. That ought to get your wheels turning. Right now, lease the all-new Subaru Legacy for just $2.99 a month. See your Subaru dealer for details. It's good to have you back, Spider-Man. There's a hero in all of us. Newsweek says Spider-Man 2 really soars. If my enemies found out about you, I could never forgive myself. Four stars hails USA Today. Wow. Go get him, Tiger. Utterly amazing. Roger Ebert raves. It's the best superhero movie I've ever seen. Ever wondered what it's really like to be a soldier? What do you got? I have a sit rep from Alpha Company. Get ready to be verified. Verified. Put yourself in the picture with this free video. You'll see over 200 great jobs in the Army and over 180 in the Army Reserve. You'll also see what skills you learn, how you can earn money for college, even what soldiers do in their free time. Call 1 800 984 Army now and get this free t shirt and your free video. Put yourself in the picture and see what it's really like to become an Army of One. All right, here's the play. Sunday night at 8. Go to ESPN Classic. Stop at the couch, and the best sports movies of all time will be right there. Real Classics with Burt Reynolds. Where sports and movies collide. On the next Cheap Seats, the show the boys were born to do. Hello. The strange pairing of babes. Whoa, well, I'm interested. And bow wows. What kind of batteries do you think this thing takes? That will leave you sane. Shit, you. God bless you. Dogs and cheerleaders. Always funny. You'll never look at halftime the same way again. Lighten up, buddy. You're at a dog show. Cheap Seats, 10 Eastern Thursday on ESPN Classic. Here's the University of Egypt. The world premiere of Sports Century, Dennis Eckersley, coming July 19th. Now, the plain truth. Baseball has always had a peculiar obsession with aerodynamic phenomena. Of course, a fly ball could demonstrate as well as Galileo the gravity of the situation, but other experiments persisted. 1938, atop Cleveland's terminal tower, 708 feet up. Ken Keltner and Frankie Pitlack proposed to play catch. The first conclusion, even before AstroTurf, Baseballs take funny bounces. In film, seeing is not always believing, but it is documented that after several tries, Pitlack finally caught one. Now, 44 years later, in 1982, a similar experiment and most noble effort in San Diego. Before I toss the ball off the building, everybody needs a piece of Cracker Jacks. Yes, and everybody needs to make a buck. But how about a glove and crash helmet for Kurt Bavacqua, ready to receive the toss from Padre catcher Terry Kennedy? A nervous battery. That last thing Dick Williams told me this morning was don't get hurt. Seriously? Sorry, yes. Maybe I'm going to get to play another game or two this year. <laughs> I'm scared of heights. I hope there's a ledge up there. I'm really scared of heights. Probably no one remembered that a young Casey Stengel once proposed tossing a ball from an airplane to Wilbert Robinson, but tossed a grapefruit. But no such mess here. How about that? The Bacchus biggest catch of the season. Piece of cake. Listen, it was fun. I enjoyed it because all these people came out. Now we're going to have to, we got to find out the taller building now. 
but also for every step forward, man will in turn move backwards. Sorry, Kurt, anyone for grapefruits? Better still, anyone for squeezing in some juicy big outs for the home plate. What you say, Mr. Ump? Dig in, y'all, the ball's in play. And no doubt he's out, too. Many plays great at the plate and many fans great at the gate in 1982. For example, within the green of Chavez Ravine, the Los Angeles Dodgers broke their own major league attendance record with 3,378,718 fans. And that's with five games to go. And in neighboring Anaheim, a new American League mark for the California Angels, 2,672,377 with three games left. Elsewhere, Nolan Ryan's animal antics. Strike him out and ape the animal. The real animal, Cincinnati's Brad Leslie, simply roared. Finally, Montreal shortstop Chris Spire, recipient of this week's Gillette Special. The Phillies were on the run all night in one game, thanks to the Expo hero. In the second inning, the bases were loaded, but then unloaded on Spires' triple. In the third, Spires' single exposed two more runs. Five RBIs is plenty for one game, but Chris aspired higher in the seventh inning with two on. Deep to left field. Going, going, and it is gone. A three-run homer for eight RBIs and a standing O at the big O. Overall, it's probably the biggest ovation I've ever received here in Montreal for some offensive output, and uh, it was very exciting. Again, I think uh, because of our situation in standings, that maybe it was a little bit less than it would have been if we were on top of our division. It may not have won a pennant, but a club record eight RBIs in one game is inspiring enough. It's uh, an amazing honor for me uh, to give the opportunity to receive the Gillette Special, and hopefully I'll have the opportunity again one day to, to do it again. Well, that's all for now, folks, and congratulations, Chris. Great show. See you next week on This Week in Baseball.